さあ皆さん The Yakuza 5 Platinum. Man, this is bringing back some good memories for me. In some of the worst times, I said represents a sort of line in the dark amid the pandemic. I started this game's Platinum run in late 2020, peak pandemic time, and I can say that this, this was my comfort game for that period. It's such a game for the fans in almost all aspects, and while that can be great for us fans already, it can also be off putting for some, with the risk of relying on what the fan expectations without pushing the game forward or looking towards innovating the series. However, I can assure you it manages to achieve a whole lot more than had been seen in the previous games, all while still retaining the gameplay and charm that made the previous games so endearing. Getting to know these games, their stories, characters, and gameplay across all modes is most certainly worth it. With the risk of sounding cliche, Yakuza 5 does feel like seven years of hard work and lessons from the series culminating into one spectacular project. Yakuza 5 is also one of the largest games in the series and carries a lot of fan favorites from the previous games. I know it is the game that introduces some extremely popular errands that would prove themselves in Yakuza 0 and subsequently Kiwami. There's a good chance the thing you love from 0 is either variation or directly from 5. Like the internet's favorite thing for a while back in the day was Bakamitai and that started with yes, Yakuza 5. In more practical aspects, the engine the game is built on is one of the best. And only slightly edged out by the Dragon Engine. I'm glad that Zero ended up on it, considering its success in the West. I don't imagine the series would have gone as far as it did if it ended on a souped-up version of Three and Four's engine. The biggest addition in Yakuza 5 is the five cities and five playable characters. I think this is not only shows the immense scope of the game, but also the ethos of incorporating old with new into a combination of near perfect harmony. There are such beautifully created cities. With the immense detail, immaculate atmosphere, and sharp uniqueness of each, this is something we would have come to expect in some form or another after four games in the series. And yet, its inclusion is still a welcome one. Not to mention the staples of the series and how they are presented differently depending on location and character you find yourself with. It certainly leaves you with a lot to do. And if you're like me and on the prowl for the platinum, you are going to spend the amount of hours you usually would spend in one game just in one city. Aiming to max out everything as far out as possible until being forced to either move on by either the story or circumstances. This is helped out immensely by the fact that everything is categorized and beautifully packaged into segments that are laid out in easy to follow segments, all presented differently depending on the context they occupy. This was the last game in the remastered collection for myself, and was the first one where I had the almighty Cyrix Z guide by my side from the beginning. I will, of course, link it down below, as it can do so much more work than I ever could. Just know that this is how I generally knew the optimal order for completing the variety of tasks in each city, and when to move on to the next one. On with the guide, and the first set of trophies are all story related. The very first one you'll get is for stepping onto the streets of Fukuoka, indicating that your new journey to unfamiliar locations has just begun. But hey, at least you have Kiryu by your side. Welcome to Nagasagi. Your journey into the fantastic game is about to begin. Also, that's the name of the trophy. The next five trophies you'll get in relation to the story will pop once you finish the chapter, or in the case of chapter three, the first part of that two-part chapter. The chapters are mainly divided by city. If you're wondering why only chapter three has multiple parts, anyways, once you finish the story, you will have the trophies of Back into the Fray, No Prison Can Hold Me, Reunited, Japan Dome Awaits, Out of the Park, and of course the traditional Thank You. Trophy that comes for finishing the game. Next is the Air to Legend trophy, and if you have platinum run the other games, you will know that this means it's time to complete the game all over again. Just this time on the hardest difficulty of Legend, which is unlocked after completing the game on hard. Remember, it can be done on New Game Plus. In fact, all the games in the series that you tackle New Game Plus on Legend difficulty, all except for Yakuza Zero. Anyway, getting through the game again, especially fully upgraded, shouldn't be too much of a challenge, especially if you have played through at least four games or more in the series. If you have beaten them on beforehand, 
you'll have the golden gun at your disposal and that can make cleaning out a whole lot of enemies way easier. It can also help at chipping away some of the boss's health bars as all you have to do is aim and shoot. It is a kind of a monotony that can really soothe the replay of the game that you're probably trying to speed run through anyway. Next is the No Easy Way Out trophy, named as such by completing the game without ever switching to normal difficulty. Now, it's probably assumed that you're not going to switch by the pause menu anyway, but if you do fail enough times, the game will give you the option on the game over screen. And resisting this temptation, if you ever find yourself in this scenario to begin with, will net you the trophy. Seems like an easy trophy, right? The problem, however, is that it isn't just switching from any difficulty to easy you have to avoid. It's specifically from the normal mode, which if you're going for the platinums means you'll be playing the game through three times. Once on normal for this trophy, since it's only this way you can earn it. Second on hard difficulty since it's the only way you can unlock legend mode and then of course once more on legend difficulty again only unlocked after a hard playthrough for the legend mode trophy. I love the game but a third time round exclusively for one trophy isn't all that great and I'm glad that this is the last time in the series we see a trophy like this. New to Yakuza 5 is the side stories for each city. That's right, side stories, not the sub stories. Sub stories just don't end the game, by the way. No, these side stories all focus around a mini game of sorts, specifically built for the city and character that participates in it. They have their own mechanics, items, and objectives specific to them, and their side narratives run parallel to the main plot. Often, one or two missions using these mechanics of the side stories will be tied into the main story as an introduction to them. The side stories are both with their own menus, mechanics, and rewards. And within the side stories themselves are often extra missions that do not advance the side narrative but can be useful for collecting items that are useful for the actual activities themselves. They're basically just like more fleshed out versions of complex minigames that came before in the series, such as the hostess managers of the previous games. This time, they come with extra missions and a full-fledged narrative. The legacy would continue into the next games in the franchise. In fact, Lost Judgment almost has the alternate form of this, with its school stories that are all minigames with exclusive mechanics and rewards and narratives that have resolutions that flow into one overarching main narrative. No such luck here though, as Yakuza 5's stay in the, the city that they're in. Anyway, your trophies for these are split into two categories for each side story, finishing the narrative as a whole and completing a set amount of missions available in the side stories themselves. The trophies are Devil Killers Defeated and Veteran Driver for Kiru, Yama Oroshi Defeated and Full Fledged Hunter for Saijima, Trendy Idol and a Bond Between Dancers for Haruka, and finally End of the Line Big Hitter for our boy Shinada. Haruka is a bit different from the rest of the characters in this game, quite obviously, but this also extends into her main gameplay loop. While it is technically just dance battles on the street and the practice and performance for the Princess League, she is of course introduced into her side story as well with the jobs on the jobs board. It's a side story most linked to the main story, just by the fact that the main narrative progression is found at the same jobs board. Also by the fact that some jobs are mandatory for the story, while the rest build her XP needed for the side story. Ultimately, you are going to be completing all the jobs either way. However, I will suggest this from the guide. <clears throat> Lastly, I suggest you stop doing the jobs well before you hit level 20. It's just a personal preference, but you'll get a point in the late game where you can boost to level 25. But if you dry up all the jobs before then, your main source of experience will be gone and you'll have to get the experience through the dance battles, which is slow. Anyway, after you finish up chapter 3 as Haruka, you will play as Akiyama before you end the chapter. However, you still earn a trophy for your end of the chapter from Haruka's perspective. The trophy for winning the Princess League. You're the princess. Also, technically before this, you can say no to your voice coach's choice, but this will lock you out of the trophy, presumably. And the decision will also lock you out of a karaoke song that you'll need for completion and obviously the platinum, so do not select it. The next trophy is for achieving 100% on the completion list. As you can imagine, earning the trophies on your way to the platinum will start to fill up this list quite a lot, but it won't do everything. In some instances, you'll be missing some rather mundane accomplishments, but in other instances, you can be in for quite the challenge. Either way, I think it's wiser to move this trophy towards the end, and from there we can go in depth on how to accomplish the more challenging aspects of the list, such as the minigames. The next three trophies are for completing 10, 30, and 50 sub-stories respectively. Sub-stories are broken down by character, and for the most part take place in their respective cities. 
However, there are a few that take place in Kamurucho. As always, there are some that are unavoidable, making your way through the story, some that unlock mini games, and some have a certain requirement to be unlocked. I suggest looking through the guide if you're struggling on what to do next. Some sub stories experience the return of the two state finish, where sub story can be completed as done instead of resolved. A done sub story is one which was completed, but not in the best possible manner. Thinking of dropping the noodles as side domain supper rather than delivering to the client. A resolved sub story, on the other hand, is a perfect run in sub story, and it usually doles out much better rewards. It ultimately does not matter for completion, but the rewards can, can be quite useful and some pride can be achieved by having all of them marked as resolved. To that end, the guide has the knowledge on when to save before a substory, commencement if you want to try for all those resolved, like I did, and also breaks down not only these, but every substory in detail as well. The trophy for 10 substories is Substory Baby, the trophy for 30 is Substory Prince, and the trophy for 50 is Substory King. The final trophy that is substory related will be unlocked once you defeat Amon and his clan, and that state can only be reached by completing all other substories in the game. Once you have completed them all, speak to the man outside New Serena as Kiryu to unlock it. This is one battle you will really want to prepare for. Give everyone armor, bring as much healing items as you can, and overcharge everyone's health bars before the battle. I have a video on my channel showing how the spa went on my end. As you can see, by the almost 50 minute run time, it's quite the battle, and that's not even accounting for some of the footage lost thanks to the PS4's 15 minute footage capture limit. Once you're successful in taking down Amon, you'll get the Amon sunglasses, but most importantly, the Substory God trophy. A big part of these games is the virtual tourism of Japan you can experience through all of them. And one of the biggest elements in tourism in general is food. Order something at least once in all the restaurants and the gourmet dragon trophy will be yours. This is a big game with big cities and a lot going on in them. So one thing that's bound to happen is for the streets to be littered with all kinds of collectibles. They're all thematically appropriate as well. Kiwi picks up trash to integrate the taxi company he works for into the local community. Saijima finds treasure maps tied to the big Sapporo snow festival. Shinada can find drawing tickets for the community lottery using a Harapon for the chance for some extremely useful materials. And of course, the famous locker keys are back in Sontan Body and Kamurucho. Just don't open one as Haruka. Anyway, picking up a hundred of these items collectively will net you the Eyes on the Ground trophy. One of the biggest evolutions in game is that of the hostesses, with large additions and overalls to the systems of the old games. This is by far my favorite iterations of this looking to one of Japan's unique quirks. The dialogue now has branching paths, and there are now more ways than ever to interact with them, including in such is a dating system more in depth than previous games, although it's still pretty shallow. If you invite them out for a date, during your session you'll hit the town and walk around to where you want to go to, while they make comments here and there about the sites and what they would like to do. Taking a hostess out for the first time will net you the 31st date trophy, and if you speed running through this section, it's the only date you'll need to go on, although I went on a few more. The hostess clubs are very much in-depth and available for every male character in their cities and once more on Kamarucho. Thus I will point to the guide once more on how to navigate them efficiently. What I will say is that some of the events that rank you up from A to S will involve a whole host of activities and requirements. Riku in Fukuoka will see you in a taxi race like in the side story. Kaguya and Sapporo will see you in a fight. Shin in Nagoya will see you pursuing a stalker. Honoka and Sontanbori will have you chasing a legendary lozenger by asking for a dream. And Hinata back in Guro Kamarucho will require 5 million yen. Even if you don't end up spending it, you still still need it on hand. Speaking of Kamarucho's hostess, you will need to unlock her first. The steps are simple, but kind of a bit all over the place. A prerequisite first, make sure you talk to all the girls after hitting their S rank to close out their stories. I mean, I guess when you head back when you need to, you'll do it anyway then. But if you're playing city by city, maxing them out means one more visit after the S rank up. Anyway, on to Hinata. First, you'll need to head to Elise right across from the Millennium Tower as its owner, Akiyama. Get the dialogue there with his employees and then head back to New Serena. Once this is done, yes, you'll need to head back with each individual character to their cities and hit their hostess club. Once fully ranked up with each hostess, each character will automatically suggest the move to Kamurucho. When that somewhat tedious action is done, given in mind you have to repeat it, head to Elise as Akiyama again and that's when Hinata will finally come up and Kiru will be suggested as a clientele of choice to be broken in. Finally, you can't just waltz in. Head to the MEB 
same location as all the other games, and then you can get started with her. Of course, now you have one final hostess to use the guide around, and finally after maxing her out to S and talking to her once more after that, you'll get a cutscene showing the turnaround the club has made and Akiyama pitching a toast to its success. Along with that is the A Toast Together trophy that will pop. So, uh, kanpai. 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 <laughs> Life is about learning is very true and also the name of the trophy you get for completing a training mission with each master. With the nature of this game, of course, there are more than 5 trainers going beyond one master per character, with some personalities able to travel across Japan and help all of the heroes out. Tetsuya is the most unique of them all, being a chef, being a celebrity chef, being a celebrity chef based on a real life Japanese celebrity chef that apparently nobody likes. What you have to do for him is interesting in concept, but hardly fun if you're trying to speed your way through it, which would be understandable. I did it quickly just to avoid some of the monotony it brought. With him, the guide is your best friend, and pay attention to his final requirements as they involve back and forth traveling. Anyway, he's not very interesting, but his rewards, or what you learn from him, are overcharged health bars as well as passive status effects from dining at the restaurants was genius. And honestly, I wish RGG would bring back a system just like that for their future games. Although you can see remnants of it in newer games, especially like a Dragon 7. Beyond Tatsuya, the IFR is back and available for all characters. This time it's a 2D side scroller fighter incorporating the 3D fighting styles and giving Haruka her own. The act of investing money into the machine returns and doing so unlocks more battle scenarios. Standard, however, it now only returns heat upgrades and later soul points, then some items. The final master that does not straight up teach you combat or dancing is Shinada's old baseball coach, Igahari. This is just a bunch of mini game challenges to improve Shinada's baseball mini game. The guide here is good, but honestly, it's not all that difficult to figure out and is a fun romp around the town. For the meals, you want to head to Cafe Alps for the strawberry parfait when prompted to eat a bunch of chemicals, and when prompted to scarf down some chicken, hit up three chicken restaurants closest to each other Damaru, Kabuya, and Sekino Yamchan. Yamachan. The rest of the masters are your standard meet and learn affairs, where you complete fetch quests but mostly just beat them down or outdancing your opponent with your new techniques. The instructions are pretty simple and often engagements are easy except for Saigo. He brings that energy he dished out in 4 back to Akiyama here in Santin Bori. The guide will help out here if you're stuck on a battle, decision or need to know where to find some items or the masters themselves. I will say Saijima's training has a quirk where he needs to figure out what stuff to bring in before he can start the training, so I'm just gonna list them off here. First offering is a carrot. Second offering is a handmade doll, and what you'll want to do for this is buy wood and a chisel from the trader and then select the chisel from your inventory and use it on the wood. Third offering is the meat of any small animal, I did it for a rabbit. Fourth offering is deer meat. The fifth offering is a gold plate, I know, into the city we go. And the final offering is also in the city and it's a pinup poster from Psycho Mart. Finally, Satoru Komaki makes his appearance in Kamarucho and is accessible to all characters. Yes, even Haruka, although her engagement is different to the rest. He will team up with his grandson and Kiryu's first master to engage in one one on two fight to truly achieve a breakthrough. This is an incredibly tough fight, but one you can bring anything into. So the suggestion is, at least for Akiyama and Shinada, that you load up on powerful armor, bringing in lots of healing items, and especially bringing quite a few shotguns and blast them from a distance. Once you defeat Komaki, You'll break past the level cap of 20 and unlock 5 more levels of upgrades, which is most certainly worth it, if not for the Amon fight alone. Speaking of level caps, getting all characters to the initial cap of 20 will net you the Reaching the Limit trophy. The next two trophies involve one of my favorite staples, the Colosseum. However, since the Colosseum is still in Kamarucho, there's now a mobile version called the Victory Road hosted by a character heavily inspired by Kiryu's voice act and the way he likes to present himself IRL. Anyway, there is this whole storyline behind the Colosseum and some of the toughest tournaments in this series can be found right here. You have to run through the gauntlet as every character, besides Haruka. I guess the Princess League is its own Colosseum in a way. It is necessary for completion and they can be tough. You'll probably be looking at the guide or some YouTube videos on how to get through them or especially for the less physically strong characters. What I can say is that practice 
and upgrades really do help out tremendously. And a little perseverance can go a long way. Along the journey, you will net two trophies directly related to the Colosseum and the Victory Road. The first is the Chosen One for completing Victory Road for the first time. And the second is Top 10 for you guessed it, placing Top 10 in the Colosseum for the first time. When running through the completion list and making it into the weapon section, you'll need to upgrade good old Kamiyama Works, which is now an inter-country network. When you get the operation up to level 5, you'll earn the Kitted Out Trophy and absolutely nothing from Kamiyama, as usual. There are new additions to Yakuza 5's combat. Most notable is the addition of a sort of separate combat state for each combat character. How to enter into the state is tutorialized once you get into the first fight as that character. They all share features of the character becoming engulfed in red heat flames, becoming unable to be harmed, and using the heat bar in real time as a resource that allows for these states. Once the heat bar drops, so will the combat state. Speaking of which, these combat states all have different names for their different characters. Kiyu has the dragon spirit, which simply requires the press of a taunt button. Shinada and Akiyama have long and basic combos to enter into their states of my media tackle and launch strike respectively. And Saijima needs to pick up his enemies by the legs to enter into his Tiger Puppetry. Once you defeat 50 enemies in these states, you will earn the trophies Dragon Fury as Kiru, Puppet Master as Saijima, Launch Striker as Akiyama, and Tackler as Shinada. On top of that, there is another addition to the combat, an ultimate addition. Each character is capable of a Climax Heat Move, which are powerful and elaborate versions of the static heat moves that do powerful damage and emulate the red heat flame look of the combat states. Each character has one out of a possible three for them unlocked at the start, and more can be unlocked later in game. Once you trigger all of the nine possible, you will get the Mr. Climax trophy. Oh yeah, they have their own separate heat bar, a little red bar encircling the kanji by the health bar and heat bar in the top left. This is followed up by, get this, performing 10 normal heat actions. The next trophies are simply for enjoying your time playing the mini games around town. Okay, for the first one you have to catch a few, but for the rest they simply require a couple of plays. Life is Entertainment is a trophy for playing every minigame at least once. This includes the arcade games of Gunray, Print Circle, Takuya no Tatsujin, UFO Catcher, and Virtual Fighter 2. The gambling games of Baccarat, Blackjack, Silo, Toy Hunt, Koiko, Ojikabu, Poker, and Roulette. And the minigames found around in town, like Air Hockey, the Banning Centers in Kamarucho and Nagoya, Bowling, Coaching Camp Classic, the Comedy Team, Darts, the Driving Range, Fishing, River, Fishing, Sea, Karaoke, Mahjong, Pachinko, Pool, Shogi, Slots, Tatsuya no Noodles, and the Snow Festival's very own Winter Combat. While doing that, you can pick up a few trophies along the way. Play Air Hockey three times, and you'll get the Pluck Defector Trophy. For the local Framer Trophy, you want to use the Print Circle machines in all the cities and choose the exclusive frame for that location. They are generally in arcades all around the cities, except for in Tsutsukumo, which does not have an arcade. Instead, the Prince Circle is in the bowling alley. Also, you have to use both arcades machines in Kamarucho, which really emphasizes the local in the trophy name. The old school gamer trophy requires you to play the Japanese arcade games that are very popular in real life. Once you play Takino Tatsujin and Virtual Fighter 2 twice or more each, you will have the trophy. The Fish for Dinner trophy requires you to catch 5 fish while river fishing. And the Ding Ding trophy requires you to play the Beast King and Aladdin A Panchi slot machines 3 times each. A bit grating for sure if you don't like the slots, but you can enter in and back out and also you don't have to play the Camel King one. Each city has a more in-depth and mechanically unique minigame that is well worth some investment. Kiyun in Fukuoka has Satsuyo Noodles, a timing game of sorts that teaches you cooking noodles to the customer's liking. Playing it 3 times will net you the A Hearty Ball trophy. Saijima has a snowball competition of the famous winter festival he can enter. It is sort of an FPS that focuses more on dodging than outright landing blows. Once you win the beginner battle royale, you will earn the Novice Snowball Fighter trophy. Haruka has an entire storyline in helping out a team of comedians that practice the duo comedic stand-ups we've seen in these games before. She stands in for one and is required to come up with the right quip at the right time. And thank goodness the remaster shows when that time should be because the PS3 version didn't. Complete one routine in this comedy team minigame and you will earn the first class entertainer trophy. Finally, Shinada can find himself raising chickens to race along a straight track in the Coaching Cup Classic. The minigame is more about micromanaging of training and whatnot, but win a race in this and you'll have the King of Coaching trophy.
Okay, the next five trophies are all miscellaneous trophies that feel good to achieve, even if they aren't specifically tied to any one area of focus in the game. The Dream Ride Trophy is for all you otakus out there and is achieved by buying the otaku decal for Kiryu's taxi. Thing is, you'll need to basically max out your ride to level 25 before you can do this. So I hope you're ready to go all in on Kiryu's side story. I was, it was fun. Now of course we won't forget about the kids at Morning Glory, despite how far away we are. Donating a total of 5 million yen will net you the Benevolent Dragon Trophy. You can do it at an ATM, just in case you forgot. Talking to all the unique NPCs across all of Japan for a collector total of at least 50 times will earn you the Good Communicator Trophy. Now of course the game wants to teach you how to learn more and recall tips it may give, so it rewards you with the Useful Features Trophy when you hit the touchpad to bring up a tip when the prompt in the form of a tip marker appears. New to this series when it was first released in 2012 was the introduction of moving cars on the road and of course the ability to get hit by a few. So if you get hit, you probably would have noticed the watch for cars trophy pop when it first happened to you. If you were a good Yakuza and stuck to the pedestrian rules, then the easiest place to get rammed into is Fukuoka, especially in the connecting streets. You want to aim for the side of the car as it passes you though. Alright, that is every single trophy except for one. All these trophies before were tied into explicit goals and weren't depending on too many external factors. However, it is now time for the completion list and the Hall of Famer trophy. It is quite a list that includes many things from unlocking and performing every heat move to dominating the Colosseum as every character and even to doing all the little things like collectibles that these lists are usually known for. Also, the trophy does not seem to pop until you head to a hideout and look at the stats from in there. Needless to say, but the Cyric Z guide here might be your hidden gem. It has completion metrics under each aspect that requires it, and the tips are pretty great as well. Don't know if I've told you that. That being said, I want to go through some of the more engaging elements on the list and try and walk you through it. The list is in the pause menu for easy tracking, and the good thing is that the completion list is shared across all characters, so you don't need to redo anything once it's done. Of course, some things can only be done by some characters and some tasks only unlock after certain actions. On to the list, and the first thing is food drink, which is relatively simple to understand, just hop in and grab a bite. However, there are a few things note. You can't eat when your health is full, so some Appstim RXs are helpful. Some stores only appear at night like the noodle stands in Fukuoka, and remember Pronto Cafe turns into Pronto Bar at night. And once Tatsuya introduces a new dish, it'll be on the menu. So come back around and have them all. Oh yeah, and there's a ton of alcohol to drink, so the legendary drinker of Rukyu is a huge help here as well. Next on the list is minigames, which would be the bulk of the list explanation. So instead, that's its own separate video I have on my channel. Exit. Yakuza 5 is a massive game that I honestly think combines some of the series, or most of the series up until that point, best elements together while giving us a wild story that manages to really tie up some ambitious multi-game character arcs while still introducing unique elements that weren't explored until then. I mean, playing as Haruka had to be one of my favorite parts, not only because just how different it was, but because it actually played well, and once again RGG managed to use gameplay to convey emotions more effectively than story cutscenes alone. Honestly, it's one of my favorite games in the entire series, and its massive expansiveness was a huge surprise and a huge treat to me as well. It is very ambitious, and although it might not hit the high marks of cohesiveness in the story, I think it would inspire the best elements of Yakuza 0 going forward, and the entire series to be honest. It really expanded my perception of what games in a franchise could be, and I think really set the foundations for the great games we got going forward, and could still get from RGG going forward. Thank you for watching. This has been a massive project in the world for me, after considering the game it's focusing on, and it has gotten away from me at times. Life moves in mysterious ways, and big projects like this are now hopefully under my control. But it kind of works with Yakuza 5 here, because if there's anything you learn in that game, besides how to say dream in Japanese, is how to deal with your massive ambitions and press through regardless. With that, I want to recommend this 7 hour video from Snaker, yeah I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's on the screen. It isn't just a playthrough, as I thought it was when I saw the runtime. It is a rather fantastic deep dive into the story and multiple other aspects of the game. 
I don't agree with everything said in it, but I resonate a lot with it in many aspects of the video and the sheer dedication of making a seriously long form analysis like this must be commended. Anyway, everybody, have a great day and don't forget to work hard and chase your Yume.